Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. It's great to have uh, with us today Bill Jordan, our favorite boomer, and of course always my partner, John Coleman. So yes. uh, welcome to our show today. Hi guys, yes. thanks for having me back. It's always, a, it's always a pleasure to get with you guys and chat about whatever it is we're chatting about. Yeah, we, and we chat about everything, don't we? We do. Yeah, and some things we probably shouldn't chat about. We but probably should roll. We should record some of the stuff that's not actually for the, you know, the YouTube channel. Oh, I've done that for our I outtakes for when we're famous. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bill, I was wondering, uh, as we get older, now maybe it's just the, the idea that I'm semi-retired as you are, um, but as we get older, I seem to need less. Um, and not just less things, because after all, we've acquired, look behind me, I've acquired a lot of things, um, but generally need less. And, and it's, it's a matter of, you could leave me alone in a corner and I'll be a happy clam. Uh, you could send me to the beach and I'll be happy. Um, I, I'm kind of, so what is that? What is, is that a phenomenon that you experience? Maybe well, everybody does at a certain age. I don't know. I was, I was I was thinking this morning about you know or about that cliches are cliches because they're true. You know, it, there, there's it's a fact that birds of a feather flock together. You know, if you want to be like better people, hang out with better people, stuff like that. So I think there's a lot to be said for the less is more stuff. The 80-20 rule, applying that to our lives, and that's one of my embrace the broom principles, by the way, about, you know, what 20% of your possessions bring you 80% of your joy. Um, the self-sufficiency thing is, yeah, I think as we get older, we've accumulated so much, we're trying to now get rid of it. The kids don't want it. They don't have room for something, you know, hey, you want this? Because now we've gotten stuff from our parents or grandparents. We've done that in our house. This is run, we're running out of room for place. So now we're trying to, yeah, let's pretend we're moving. <laughs> let's, see, let's see what we can get rid of. But part of this self-sufficiency thing to me is also not having to call someone for help all the time. As far as being part of your own rescue. Uh, I mentioned before about Facebook memories uh, popping up. And it was, gosh, it was Six years ago, the other morning, my wife took a picture of me. I'm changing a flat tire on the side of our expressway going through Raleigh. I was trying to get her to the airport on time. And I could have called AAA, but it's like they're not going to get if she, If I wait for them, she's going to miss her flight. I've got to change the tire here on the side of the road with people buzzing by at 75 miles an hour. I've got to get that done so I can get her on her plane in time. Being self-sufficient so you can do that. And then when I did that, I remembered as a kid, my dad teaching me how to change the flat tire. And this is back in the day. I'm sure you guys remember when the jack on the for the tire, you had to push it all the way down or it was going to snap back up and crack your skull open. Yeah. I mean, that's just the way it was. Well, he taught me how to change the tire. We changed it twice to make sure I knew how to do it. The next morning when I woke up, that same tire on my mom's car was flat. Oh, <laughs> did he do that? I think he did. I never, I never thought of asking him, or if I did ask him, I don't remember his answer. But knowing my dad, that's exactly what he did. He trained me to do it, and then he put me to the test to make sure I knew how to do it. He was going to work. Yeah. She had somewhere to go. I had to get it done. I didn't crack myself open. So he taught me a lot of that stuff. I wish I'd paid a little more attention to uh, his lessons. I wish I'd paid attention to his advice on taking instead of taking drafting in high school that I would have taken a wood shop and a metal shop and learned how to actually do some of that stuff. In those areas, I'm pretty helpless. But when we can be self-sufficient and not have to pick up the phone and call somebody, I mean, we know amongst us three, John, Art, and myself, uh, you know, we'll, we'll ha happen upon some uh, technical snags every now and then. And one or all of us will pretty much know how to get that fixed. And we're not on the phone trying to call somebody. Um, of course, I did have an Apple problem where I needed a new hard drive here not too very long ago. So self-sufficiency is, is a, I think it kind of goes hand in hand, uh, uh, John and Art, as we get older, we need less, but I think it helps us when we can provide our 
to uh, come to our own aid. Yeah, you know, I have to say something that why I'm so impressed. There are a lot of reasons I'm so impressed with you, Bill, but really super impressed. And I think most of our audience can uh, uh, feel and understand this. Unless you were still driving the DeSoto that your dad trained you to change a tire on when you were taking Marianne to the to the airport, unless you was driving that, I'm assuming you weren't. It was remarkable that you even knew where to find the spare tire. <laughs> because I used to find it in the trunk. It's not there well, anymore. Well, you know what, too? Back in the day, the tires were pink. Now you got these little baby tires, and people right. look at you like they're feeling sorry for you when you're riding down the road always going for the tire. Got the little baby tire going on. So, uh, yeah, sometimes you do have to look for the tire. I now know where that is, but when I changed my mom's tire back in the day, I mean, that was a full-blown, that was a Pontiac, man. That was a car that used to have bumpers. We don't have bumpers on cars anymore. Uh, they used to have those big chrome bumpers actually protected you. So, uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah, just changing the tire and got it done, and, uh, you know, you get a little feeling of accomplishment. If you need something painted, you know, paint it. You don't have to call a painter for that kind of thing. I mean, there's something certainly we need help with. But if there's just stuff around the house, I mow my own lawn. It's fine if you don't want to mow your own lawn, but it's, again, it's now a meditative thing with me. And, oh, believe me, you know, as we're just now getting into springtime and getting back into that, it's kind of fun initially. Come, you know, November and I'm still mowing the lawn, it gets a little old at that point. Bill, do you think um, that the younger generation, uh, and I'm thinking of my grandkids now more than my, more than my children, um, do you think they are not self-sufficient they are, after all technology advances uh every year we have something new that's more convenient life gets easier um i wonder that my grandkids are not or could not be self-sufficient i think they are and especially when it comes to tech you know good my point. 14 year old grandson he's not going to be calling up apple support he's going to he, he will figure it out because he's not afraid of what buttons to push yeah yeah but when it comes to this is a great thing and it leads me into another quote from frank martin who's the basketball coach men's basketball coach at university of south carolina and i just posted this meme on facebook not too very long ago and the gist of it was he gets tired of hearing people say how kids today have changed and his kids have not changed anything. They don't know. They don't know what they should be doing. It's the parents who have changed. Well, I'm going. I'm going to. I'm going to suggest uh, that um, uh, John, you gave us the big tell when you were saying, "Well, not so much my kids, but my grandkids." You ever think they'll be? Well, unless you are a North Face uh, or REI generation kind of person that uh, you do everything uh, for yourself, the DIY. Uh, a channel surfer, uh, you you almost said about your kids, but then you realize your kids are becoming more self-sufficient, okay, as they're getting older. And yes. you know what? Our grandkids, same thing's going to happen when they get to be in their late 30s, 40s, 50s, uh, and we're long since gone. Uh, their parents will be very proud that, hey, look, our kids are becoming self-sufficient just like we became. Yeah, good point. Good point, Art. Sure. So that is so, true. So, uh, Bill, um, how about we take just a moment, and you lead us in embracing the boom—a quiet moment, <laughs> a meditative moment. Embracing the boom again. The gist of this is, and I like alliteration. So, embrace the boom—the the repetition of a consonant sound, alliteration. Embrace the boom has to do with being a baby boomer. If you were born between 1946 and uh, 1964, you're by definition a baby boomer. And I think that society has kind of written off baby boomers. It hasn't been that long. No one's ever said it to me, that whole thing of, okay, boomer, you know, okay, we've heard your how you do it. But I think there's a lot of experience and a lot of wisdom. Uh, I enjoy being a mentor to some of my younger friends and family members. They seem to want to know what I think about stuff because we've been down that road. We've been we've had experiences that they are now encountering as they are getting out in the workplace and just getting out into life. And I now appreciate the stuff that my dad told me when I was a kid, when he was it wasn't called a baby boomer then, but he was in those ages. He had life experience. He was not college educated, but he had life experience. 
So I think there's more to our lives. I think that even if you're 50 years old, 55, 60, 65, 70, whatever, I think there are ways that we can still improve our lives with these practices. I've got 15 practices. I lay them out on my YouTube channel, Embrace the Boom. And you can also find direct links to them. And also, if you'd like to pick up one of these mugs, it's not a uh, art. You keep calling it a cup. It's a mug. It's a 15 ounce hearty, 15 ounces of whatever you want to put in it. Believe me, I put a lot of stuff in it. Uh, that's available all at BillJordanEmbraceTheBoom.com. But it's a, it's a philosophy and it's a way of life. It's practices, I say, 15 of them that I wish I had adopted and embraced when I was 16, 17, 18 years old before I went out into the workforce. It would have saved me a lot of wear and tear and a lot of heartache and a lot of trial and error if I had done so. So it's really borrowing a lot from the ancient Stoics who, who dealt with the same things in their society hundreds of years before Christ, the same things that we're dealing with now. And I've just learned so much from them. And I'm just trying to impart it as I go along, it's just, I hate to say it's kind of a ministry to me, but it's kind of a ministry for me. Well, I would say that uh, one man's mug is another man's cup. <laughs> well, but, with that, but no matter what we do, we can all embrace the boom. We can do that. So as all I right, said, Bill. live your life, forget your age, and embrace the boom. Thanks for having me. See you me, soon. Guys. Bye. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.